Hi everyone that's joining. Uh, uh, many thanks for joining this Faculty of Clinical Informatics webinar on um, on our current recruitment round and, and how to join. Um, we're lucky to have a very uh, uh, yeah an exciting panel of our members here and um, and our chair Jonathan uh, taking part as well. Um, I've just got a bit of housekeeping up on screen. Um, if you could just keep yourselves muted uh, while presenters are, um, are speaking. Um, but um, please do put questions in the chat um, as we go uh, and we'll get to them at the Q&A section at the end. Um, and we are having a workshop on the application form uh, and during that so we're happy for you to kind of uh, jump in, put your hands up, um, ask questions. It's meant to be a, a bit more of an interactive uh, section. Um, we are currently recording just to let you all know and this will be available to uh, watch back on the faculty website afterwards. Um, so if you know any colleagues or anyone that's unable to join, uh, I'll, I can send you the video and please do pass it on. Um, and yeah, so without further ado, uh, Jonathan, I'll pass over to you to introduce yourself and the faculty. Um, thank you, Joe. Uh, welcome, everybody. It's great to see uh, this much interest. Um, I'm Jonathan Kay, and I'm currently chair of the council of the faculty. And I'll very briefly explain some bits about structure there. So I, I've, I've been um, an executive officer and trust uh, of, of the faculty since it started about three years ago, and I've been a trustee since it became a charity um, just over a year ago. Started absolutely nothing at that time. We had no staff, no paper, no members, no money, um, and we've made enormous progress in the last year. We're now a charitable incorporated organization. That's one of the types of charities. We have um, several staff, Joe and colleagues. We have the executive officers, that's people like me as chair of council and the honorary secretary and honorary treasurer and a vice chair. And most importantly of all, we've got 800 fellows, members and associates. We're really delighted with those numbers. And someone's going to be the thousandth member and interviewed at some point. That's going to be really exciting. Uh, what are the objectives? Well, it's difficult with clinical informatics. It's a phrase that people might not be too familiar with, um, but it's professionalization. Those things that you take for granted when you come across, well, think of someone from your own professions, um, advanced nurse practitioner. People know what that means, what you'd be able to explain to somebody like that. Um, a cardiothoracic surgeon, we know what skills they'd have, what sort of training they'd have, what responsibilities you'd expect to give them. But when we get to clinical informatics, historically, it's looked like amateur time. This is something that sort of people drift into and, and they do it and they do it as part of their job. There aren't many full time clinical informaticians out there, but it hasn't been very professional. What are the skills that you should expect of a clinical informatician? What's the behavior you should expect of a clinical informatician? How are they going to be regulated? Now, we're not a regulatory body. We're not a member registration body. So let me mention just a few words about eligibility. This is really, really uh, wide. So anyone who is registered with an, with an association, a profession that's regulated by the Professional Standards Authority is eligible to become a member or fellow. And that's everybody, all the professions across social care and across healthcare. It's really, really wide. And in this cohort of recruitment, we've got a special push on healthcare scientists. So it's that right. most people who are already fellows and members and associates are part time, not full time. So that's what we most people are doing clinical informatics as one of their roles as part of the job, but but aren't full time. So that's members and fellows. And then for people who are not registered with and regulated by a body that comes under the Professional Standards Authority, we have associate. And uh, jo Joe runs this scheme and you can apply to be an associate at any time. And we can discuss who that's suitable for. For members and fellows, the recruitment process is rather different. We're in the middle of the seventh recruitment process at the moment. And what happens is you fill in your form. It's going to be online this time round. And the last session, of the last part of this session will be about how to fill in the form, hints, tricks, things to avoid, how you can get help and how to do all of that. Please just be open with your questions there. They then go to a group of assessors 
I did six rounds of assessments. I'm not assessing this time. And remember, all they'll know about you is what you put in that form. And they have certain criteria and they can come back with an offer of membership or fellowship. And in order to see a due process, we have a chair, a very eminent clinical informatician from the United States who is not one of the assessors, but will make sure that the assessors uh, behave themselves. So the chat's running now. You're going to hear um, some presentations. Please use the chat or write down your questions and answers, and then we'll run the last part as interactively as possible. Thank you, Joe. That's great. Thanks, Jonathan. Um, so we've got a video from one of our members, Amita, um, who's unfortunately able, not able to be with us live, but I'll just run her video. Hi, my name's Amita and I'm currently a clinical fellow at Health Education England. Uh, by background, I'm a pharmacist um, and the reason why I joined the Faculty of Clinical Informatics uh, was to really meet like-minded individuals um, and connect with other healthcare professionals um, who are interested in clinical informatics. Um, so a bit about myself. Um, so as I mentioned, I'm a pharmacist by background with experience in the hospital setting. Um, and I think my digital journey really began in hospital when I took on an electronic prescribing and medicines administration role. So this was where I Im implemented EPMA um, in a new hospital trust. Um, and that really taught me a whole great deal of things. And that was really the start of my digital journey. It then prompted me to apply for a project role um, within the trust. And this really had two main outcomes. The first was to um, install a pharmacy dispensing robot um, within the department. Um, and with that, really had to manage the technical aspects of that, but also the operational aspects. And we're keeping the service running, um, but also liaising with uh, the company who we procured the robots with uh, to ensure yeah. that we've got maximum benefit from all of the facilities. The second part of it was piloting an automated medicines cabinet on one of our hospital wards. Um, and because this was a pilot and something that we hadn't done before, it really required a, a great deal of, um, of working with other healthcare professionals, such as nursing, uh, to really optimise and redefine workflows, um, but also with the company um, itself uh, to try and optimise the system and the technology behind it. Um, for, for our hospital and the way in which we wanted it to work. So as I mentioned before, the reason why I joined um, the FCI is to connect with like-minded individuals. Um, and actually we're, in the we're currently in the process um, of setting up a pharmacy special interest group uh, where, we, where we have a more targeted group uh, that, can, that can discuss such things and actually share our learning. Um, so that's a bit about myself and why I decided to join the Faculty of Clinical Informatics. Was everyone able to hear and see that in the end? Yeah, yeah, could see and hear it fine, Joe. OK, brilliant. Thanks. Sorry for the slight technical hiccup. So yeah, so that's Avatar. Um, as she said, she's helping set up our, um, our pharmacy group at the faculty, so um, she's happy to take questions after after the session. Um, so if anybody uh, wants to put anything in the chat for amateur or you could email us um, we can uh, we can get back to her afterwards. Um, so I think um, I can hand over now to Robert. Um, Robert's one of our members who's um, setting up a healthcare science group at the faculty. Um, so, Robert, uh, are you OK to um, to go ahead? Absolutely. Thank you, Joe. Um, so, yes, uh, I'm a healthcare scientist um, from the life sciences uh, domain, uh, biomedical science. Um, I'm uh, old enough to remember when PCs first started and actually having an electronic calculator was quite cool. Um, and that was really the start of my um, uh, digital journey. Um, I've managed the implementation of laboratory information management systems, connecting them to EPRs, um, electronic requesting and reporting, um, but also extracting data and um, putting that into uh, other systems to enable people to, to generate information from the data that's flying around. Um, what 
really interested me about the faculty and I first came across it actually when I was when I'm some work I'm currently doing on pathology messaging um, and there's a huge interest in this from from the users of the data from a pathology angle we're really interested in in making sure that what we've produced arrives exactly as we produced it um, in in other informatic systems but for GPs for researchers for clinicians in in uh, secondary and um, uh, tertiary care they're much more interested in some of the metadata that flows with it that is not as immediately relevant as, as it might seem uh, within the laboratory. And the great thing about the faculty and what attracted me to it was that's what's the, at the core of what it, what we do. It's, it's where clinical informatics comes first and you bring your professional expertise to it rather than being uh, a specialist in, in one of the 50 odd healthcare science disciplines um, with a bit of informatics tacked on the side. And as Jonathan said, that's really important from a professional standing recognition and credibility point of view. Often people will say, well, why, what, 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 what do you know about clinical informatics? What's, what's special about your background knowledge? Um, and it's harder to demonstrate that from a, a specialist professional angle than it is to say, well, actually, I'm, I, my, my, my skills and my knowledge have been recognised in, in my membership and, and fellowship of the faculty. Um, and I'm able to look to the core competencies which the faculty has developed as a, uh, as a, as a basis for my accreditation and for my CPD. Um, and so that, that provides a much more structured framework that I expect over time, and, and the great thing about the faculty is that it's, it's growing very fast, will become recognised and it will become the currency that people will understand around competence and around knowledge and around the place to go to find out about clinical, clinical informatics and the skills and knowledge that they have and also to have done that in amongst all the other professions so you're getting everyone in together and as Joe said I'm uh, just starting up a healthcare science uh, special interest group so if you are interested in uh, and you're successful in membership really and you're a healthcare scientist I'd be really pleased to see you in that group thank you Joe that's brilliant thanks Robert um, and yeah just uh, put in the chat if anyone has some questions for Robert please do uh, enter them in there and, and we'll get to them at the Q&A at the end um, that's brilliant um, so we also have Ewan, um, who is part of our uh, AHP group at the moment. He's he's co-chair. Um, so Ewan, are you uh, all right to go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, thanks, Joel. Uh, afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Ewan McComiskey. I am a physiotherapist by background, a proud digital physio within the profession, uh, and I have the privilege to work full time in, in digital and data and as a clinical informatician. So I'm the, the UK digital and data lead for the Chartered Society of Physiotherapy, which is right across the UK. So we have uh, just over 60,000 members uh, of, the, of the CSP. Um, my journey with informatics um, was accidental at the start. Um, I was uh, a practicing clinician um, and I was a little bit interested in computers, more of the gaming side, I have to say, rather than, than the, the proper uses of, of, of computers. Um, but because I was interested in computers and my manager hated them, I was sent as a departmental rep uh, when we were implementing a new EHR uh, in, in the trust I worked in, which was NHS Lothian, which is in and around Edinburgh in Scotland. So um, it snowballed from there and you know for the first meeting by the time I got into the second one I understood more of the acronyms and then I started to understand what was actually being talked about and then got interested and just got involved in it. So it led from implementation of a system to understanding training to understanding access to students to improving the system to being able to embed standardised data to analysing that data. So it just snowballed and snowballed. So it, it led into other jobs as well for me. So informatics was a, a a very pleasant but unexpected um, sideways step in my career uh, and, and delighted that I made it. Um, I grew from that a departmental role to a regional role to a national role and now working across the UK uh, and and I think one of the things that has become more clear to me the more I've been involved with informatics is the more that you realise that you know the more you realise that you don't know. So for me, the Faculty of Clinical Informatics offers that CPD where we all try frantically to keep up with everything that's going on 
all failing miserably, I might add, but at least there's permission from each other to not know everything, but to know a little bit more about lots of things. So the CPD is really an, an important aspect of, of why I joined the faculty. The other thing is about the peer network as well. So as much as I'm a proud digital physio, there's not that many of us in our profession. So I, I seek people outside my profession who may not share the same starting background, but we share the same current place in terms of our want to, to know a little bit more about informatics, get involved. And the other thing is about amplifying voice. Um, so within the physiotherapy profession, I want to increase the volume of informatics. And within informatics, I want to raise the volume of the physiotherapy voice. So there's a double edge to that, that, that we, we are able to, to empower each other. And by doing that, we're able to empower other people within the informatics profession. So when I speak to, to Robert and others from the healthcare science background, then our, our common current place is, the, is, is in informatics, but what can we share from our professional, other professional backgrounds that, that can help to make our jobs better? Um, and yeah, like Joe was saying, I'm, I'm co-chair of the HP Special Interest Group with my colleagues Alex Wilson and Rafia Barat. Uh, we are very new and um, we are a number of weeks old, um, but we're very excited about what we're going to be doing in terms of making sure that that AHP voice is stronger and getting more AHPs into that group is a really good starting point. So I hope that there are many AHPs on the call today uh, and if um, hopefully we can we can get more involved with the with faculty and we, we can continue to grow our, our voices uh, within it and out with the faculty. That's brilliant. Thanks, Ewan. Um, and yeah, it's kind of touched upon. Uh, yeah, one of the key things of the faculty really in that um, we, we're trying to bring together sort of, you know, the, the informatics side of things and the clinical side of things and uh, various different professions to kind of um, Come, come together in that way and, and collaborate on things and and the sort of uh, professionalization and standardization aspect is very important when as kind of um, you had touched on there's different ways of getting into it at the moment a lot of which aren't sort of um, much of a set route so um, yeah thanks Ewan. Um, great so we're going to do a quick um, workshop on the application form now um, so oh, uh, there you go. So yeah, Jonathan, I'll pop up the application form on the screen and then we can um, go through it. Thanks. Is that coming up? Yep. Great. So I, 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 and, and thanks and everyone, please start firing them into the chat now. So this is the membership application form um, and uh, Look, it's got a deadline on it. Yeah, usual rule for deadlines, don't run up to them. OK, standard advice for filling in any form, write it in good time. Get someone else to read what you've written before you send it in. Yeah, if you can't think of anybody, I'm sure we can find somebody there. Yeah, I mean, you've all, probably all had the experience of sending something and immediately afterwards finding the typos in it. This is all that the assessors are going to know about you. This is it. This is your chance to sell yourself. You have to get the form uh, to do that job for you. So you're going to get someone else to read what you've written and you're not going to run up against a deadline. This time round, the forms are going to be online. And what I do in that situation is I write everything somewhere else, a word processor, a text editor, something you're familiar with. So you can do your word count and your spelling checking and your grammar checking and anything else you want, not on the form. I just find it a lot easier to work somewhere else and then cut and paste it in at, at the last minute. Right, let's scroll to the form, please. OK, um, na name, email address, telephone number. Yeah, OK, right. And up we go. Right. Degrees and other relevant qualifications. The assess we've already mentioned the width of professions who, who are going to be applying for membership and fellowship and associateship, and they're already there already. Please remember that the assessors may not understand how your profession works. Yep. Thank, thank, thanks for the chat. I'll come to that in a minute. Please keep them coming. Right. So just ex explain what that is to somebody. Professional registration body and number. We're going to check that you are registered with a body. Sorry, for members and fellows, not for associates. We're going to check that the, you, you are in good standing with your body that's regulated by the Professional Standards Authority. That's what that's for. And the next one, current roles. OK, 
So I saw a question about acronyms. Yeah, acronyms are fine. But that first use, please say what it means in this role. Don't expect people to know exactly what it means in your organization. NHS is full of bizarre terms that don't mean anything to anyone else outside there. So explain what they mean. We've got current roles. We've got previous roles. That's likely for most of you to be a main role in your own profession. Today, we've heard about pharmacy. We've heard about healthcare scientists. We've heard about physiotherapy and a clinical informatics role within that. That doesn't have to be a whole job. It's just something that you do. On quest, uh, is it literally job title or a description? Uh, it, it, it's enough for the assessors to understand what it is. That's likely to mean that a description that fits in the box is going to be really helpful. Uh, previous roles, how far back are you going? Well, remember the usual way to do that is most recent first, and anything that you think is going to be relevant in your cause for being accepted. So it's highlights. If you did something particularly interesting five years ago and aren't doing it now, please put it in. Yeah. Previous roles. Question six. We're delighted that we're, we're able to fund some bursaries for healthcare scientists in this round. We did this uh, for um, uh, women uh, of colour in the previous round with funding from the Shuri Network, and that was phenomenally successful. We're just delighted we've got special bursaries to support you financially for healthcare scientists. That's why we need to know that one. And question seven, right, you're now going to get a set of boxes with these titles on. So this one is experience in the workplace. What I have to say about this one is, the way that the scoring system works, this is just like uh, exams at school, is if you don't, if you leave a box empty, it's very hard to get enough points in the scoring system. So you're going to make sure that there's something in every box. If it has to be a bit of repetition between boxes, that's a lot better than leaving a box empty. We'll come back to the exact eligibility of healthcare scientists after this session. Thanks for that in the chat. So we've got several boxes and you're going to put something in each of them. It says a maximum of 500 words. There's no minimum, but anything else you can tell us about yourself that supports your cause is really helpful. That's clinical informatics experience in the workplace. We don't have a tight definition of clinical informatics, but you've heard the sort of things that people are doing within departments on EPR projects in other professional societies where you may be doing things, personal projects you've been involved in that's experience in the workplace. And eight, please, Joe. Leadership roles and or recognition local, national, international level. Have you been asked to set up a group, to chair a committee, to work on a committee on anything to do with clinical informatics? There's lots of these. They're different in different settings. So maybe some people have some examples they can put into the chat of things they have done and asking where they're suitable. The answer is yes, they are suitable. Anything there. But if you're involved in a project or you're on a committee, what we want to hear is, what does that committee deliver? What does the project deliver? Not there's a committee called X liaison, but what does it actually do? And what was your contribution to that output? What did you deliver? And nine, please. Clinic, uh, commitment to clinical informatics as a professional discipline. Yeah, why? This is almost why do you think the faculty is important? Yeah. How's the future going to be different from the past? What do you want to see in your profession about clinical informatics? Um, that, that's an enormous range. It might be better efficiency. It might be better safety. It might be better patient empowerment. It might be better working conditions for staff. Where does clinical informatics really uh, fit? Do you want to be a full time clinical informatician? We'd be very interested in that. So from your point of view, how do you see the profession of clinical informatics going forward and your con contribution uh, to, to that profession. So that's nine and then 10 is money. OK, so there is a pricing structure. We do have um, reduced uh, uh, fees uh, linked to income. And, and if anyone's got any questions about that, Joe's the expert on that one. And as I've said earlier, this time round, we have the bursaries for healthcare scientists. 
Um, so I'll pause at that point, and I wonder if either Joe or Robert could pick up specifically on the eligibility for the bursaries for healthcare scientists, please. What did I say? Fill in your form in good time. Get someone else to have a look. I found it easier to work offline and then copy and paste. And please make sure you're telling us about yourselves. It's all that the assessors know and put something in every box. Thank you. Eligibility for healthcare scientist bursaries. Yes, I'm happy to. Yes, so we've got um, this question. Was it where was it? Was it earlier on or was it down here? Uh, we've got this question here because um, uh, we've been working with with Health Education England on this scheme um, and the sort of the scientist training programs and higher specialist scientist programs uh, was uh, just sort of a way of identifying healthcare scientists um, in this form, a sort of easier way of identifying them. But uh, but the bursaries are open wider to anybody who's a healthcare scientist who's um, registered with HCPC or AHCS and kind of more broadly really um, if you identify uh, as a healthcare scientist whether it's a membership application or an associate application so um, so this is here to identify people on this training program but it is open um, more widely. Um, Robert do you have anything to add to that? Uh, I, I, that's my understanding as well Joe so and you're much more closer to it than I am. Um, I, a couple of things I, I would say, do, do include um, your professional roles. Jonathan um, was talking about what your roles are. If you have a professional role um, as opposed to your, your work role, so in your professional body, if you're doing something with clinical informatics, do put that in as well, because um, that's very important. Um, and in terms of what's relevant, um, it's very easy when, and I'm thinking about when I filled in my 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 form because I've recently upgraded from being a member to a fellow. Um, it's quite easy to underestimate or to just think, well, that's part of my day job. It's not clinical informatics. If it's where, if it's anything to do with clinical informatics, and you're using or producing data and turning it into knowledge, or you're using electronic technology to do that, then you're in the field of clinical informatics in my view um, and so so do make sure that you get everything in uh, and the fact that you're you're interested means that you clearly feel there's a a, a, a real need for for the faculty and what it's going to do for you thank you i, I see ewan's hand up <clears throat> yeah yeah hey, thanks jonathan i was just going to support what robert said there because is there anyone out there just doing one job just now, do you know, I think we've all got a job and then we've got lots of different roles we play within that jobs and committees we sit on or things that we're interested in or representing different things. So get all that stuff in there if it's about informatics. The way I did it when I did my application, which is a couple of years ago now, I'm, I'm a fellow of the faculty, was to think back because the things that I don't think are big things now, if I went back to band five, newly qualified physiotherapist Ewan, and said this is what I had done or what I was doing, they would have felt like completely foreign, completely alien. So think about those things that, you know, don't don't um, don't underestimate the things that you've done before, even though they might not seem massive now, because they were big things at that time and they were important things that you did. So make sure you include all those bits and pieces too. And and yeah, like you said, don't just think about the job you get paid for, think about the job that you do. So get all those little nuggets of things in. And as a professional body employee, yes, we've got lots of people who are part of our groups who present at conferences, who, who lead um, special interest groups within professional bodies. So all of that stuff, rather than just your, just your employed job description stuff, get, get the stuff that you really do and put it all in there. I think there was. I just I noticed the question about HMRC um, tax relief, Joe. I think that was that's a, that's a yes, isn't it? Is the answer to that? It is. Yes, I've just um, I just popped a link in the chat uh, to our website for the tax relief. But yeah, as a registered charity, um, uh, yeah, you can get tax relief on your fees. Um, and also just to touch upon the um, the pricing structure uh, that Jonathan mentioned, I'll, I'll I'll put a link in the chat as well. But um, we have uh, yeah a rate for those who are um, under 50,000 per annum, a rate for those who are under 25,000 um, 
and also applies to uh, retired um, maternity and paternity leave or unpaid sabbatical leave. So um, there's different rates for fellow member and uh, associate on there. Uh, and there is also um, a student rate of, of £10. Um, so I'll put, the, uh, I'll put that in the chat as well. Um, and just uh, one other point that would be, uh, I think, helpful to make is that um, uh, that's that's spelled out here uh, in the in the membership form is that we we ask for your name and, and email address and, and telephone number here because um, so that we can you know process the application and um, and kind of take it forward. But the, but that information will only be seen by the administrative staff at the faculty um, and the uh, the applications are anonymised before they go to the recruitment panel. So um, so the recruitment panel aren't uh, seeing your um, your personal details when uh, when it gets sent to them to, for review, they're just seeing the answers to your questions. Um, While I was listening to Robert, um, I, I was thinking about this problem of defining what's in clinical informatics. Um, and I think, Robert, you mentioned systems implementation. Yep. Um, and knowledge management, so people writing guidelines, working on guidelines both within departments, patient facing guidelines, all of that's in clinical informatics. People doing activity analysis, statistical summaries of what their department does. It's pretty hard to write a business case nowadays without an informatics component. So it's really wide definition. And if you've got any doubt about that from the point of view of filling in the forms, it's clinical informatics and put it in the forms. You and also raise the time dimension about things you've done previously. And of course, if they were really successful, you forget about them. You remember the ones that didn't go all that well. Yeah. So how far back were you going in successes, Ewan? Yeah, five, five years ago, things you succeeded. Yeah. Again, just put them in so the assessors know that you've done them. Right. And, um, and I think that's that just on that point about how far back to go. Um, and people have mentioned a lot of professionals uh, in, in clinical informatics are stepping into and out of uh, the, the work that they do. So it may be that it was perhaps seven or eight years ago, you did a really big thing and then you moved on and clinical informatics was a bit less of your career. And then it's coming back now. Uh, Jonathan, I, I think that's the sort of thing that people ought to be still focusing on. Yep. And, and put your contribution in the form. Yeah. And as Jonathan was saying, the successes are the ones that we forget about and we bear the, the, the scars of the ones that don't work out quite so well. But regardless of how the project ended, you will definitely have learned from it. So it's like you said it's it's your your role within it and you're learning from it. It doesn't have to be the you know, all singing, all dancing success story, because we we all we we've all got those scars, right? So uh, I, I think make sure that you, you Put your, put your learning across within it as well. Um, and, and, and like I said, it's all the learning that you've done. And that can be reading things, attending things, speaking at things, whatever, as well as jobs done. So yeah, the, the broadest spectrum of informatics. Um, yeah, uh, uh, overseas experience, absolutely. That that's something that's part of your development. So this is not an NHS operation. It's not a UK experience only. Um, overseas experience, definitely put it in. And um, by the way, I, I think that learning from other professions and experience in other countries is one of the most important things in clinical informatics. Yeah, because we've got so many unsolved problems. So that lateral transfer of experience everyone says is something that we're missing and is part of in other professions you take for granted. You know that other professions, your profession has found ways of solving problems. In clinical informatics, we're still making contact with each other. So definitely include overseas experience. The assessors will probably be pretty interested in that. anybody else have a question on the form um you're welcome to jump in or put your hand up we've got another one there yeah um, kay's got a question there about membership and fellowship yeah that's now uh 
the, the, the same form. It didn't used to be, so people who applied earlier may have seen something slightly different. Now it's the same. So you fill it in the same, and then the assessors will make a recommendation, and then they'll come back to you with, with offers of doing that. So same form. Fellowship, we're looking for more experience at a higher level, um, more leadership. Those aren't so important uh, earlier on. But don't worry about that cutoff. Fill the form in, making the best case that you can, and then the assessors will make a recommendation on that. Thanks, Kay. Yeah. I, I was going to throw in another plea out there as well, and I don't know if the right people are on the call, but um, I'm a Scot, you can tell by the accent. I live in Northern Ireland now, and I think it's really critical that we highlight some of the good stuff that's going out throughout the whole of the UK to make the UK FCI as strong as it possibly can be. There, there can be a tendency in places, and it's not at the, at a criticism aimed at the FCI, but in other places that everything is London centric and London focused, when there's really, really great stuff going on in different pockets of, of the rest of the UK. So it's, if you're sitting somewhere that you don't feel there's good representation, then there's probably good reason for it. So step up to the plate and let's get involved. And that's part of raising the your own voice within the clinical informatics profession uh, is so we can share that because some of the great stuff that you're doing in your profession and your part of the UK, um, everybody's going to be interested in it. So it, yeah, please, if, if if you feel that it's London focused or England centric or medical centric, then get involved and, and help to change that dynamic if that's something that you feel is there already. I don't feel it is in the faculty, but it has been elsewhere. So let, let's try and do what we can to to challenge that dynamic. Yeah. Yeah, uh, thanks for that one about about countries, Ewan. Definitely UK wide. Um, our secretary, our honorary secretary, works in Scotland. Our vice chair works in Wales. There has been some misunderstanding, so definitely we also now have categories for international members and fellows, so that can be put there. Uh, and also, I'd add, we're not an NHS body, although of course most people are working in the NHS. There's no requirement there at all. So let let's keep that wide uh, geographical point of view. And I think I've got two more coming up in the chat. Um, question about can you resubmit uh, with today's nuggets? Thank, thank you. I, I like nuggets. Um, I don't think there's any rule against that, is there, Joe? No, no, no. You're welcome to reapply. Uh, yeah, until the 22nd, uh, the deadline. So that's fine. And yeah, we can take your your most recent one. Yep. Thanks, Mark. Yep. Uh, looking forward to that. And a really important question from Bethany. Uh, I work for a company developing software for the NHS. Well, firstly, I, I'd say. Um, the coming, I come from a laboratory medicine background, and people who have moved in and out between um, healthcare organisations and technology company supply are are crucial in laboratory medicine. They're crucial across clinical informatics. I'd like to see more people with portfolio careers moving in and out. Any successful sector looks like that. If you're not registered by a professional body, please apply as an associate. Applying as an associate means you're not limited with these windows for cohorts in the way that members and fellows are. You can apply at any point and we'll also be able to guide you if you do want professional registration. But aren't already registered with a body under the Professional Standards Authority. We do have a route through the Federation of Information Professionals that can help you in your career. So please apply for associate status. And if you want to, we can then discuss working as an individual to, through the Federation of Informational Professionals. So we now think we have routes for everybody, whatever their starting point. We have lots of uh, fellows, members and associates working in technology companies and supplier companies. Somebody had asked a question earlier about acronyms, and I think that was part of the application form, but just a mm. bit of reflection. The acronyms don't stop, <laughs> you know, in terms of what we use in clinical informatics, we're as bad as any other place uh, or any other group of professionals. Um, but 
as I say, the, the more you know, you start to be able to and, and start to be guilty of using them as well. But also the, the you know, the more you know, the more you don't know. So you start to, you know, be Googling lots of things that you don't understand. But that's the glory of working with peers and other professions and other sectors is that you learn much more about everything else that's going on. Mm -hmm. And become aware of the ones that you use that are, are not helpful to, to, to anybody but yourself. Um, but yeah, and yeah, just to build on that, as it says on the form, you know, uh, and, unless it's unless it's a very well used one, then please do spell out the acronym the first time. And uh, yeah, uh, I think still, as is the case with a lot of applications, kind of assume that the the assessment panel don't uh, don't have don't really know anything about it beforehand, and try and you know make things as clear as possible and, and spell things out as much as possible because the application form is all they have to go on. <laughs> I feel your pain, Kay. <laughs> I think we all do. Yep. Uh, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone else have any questions about the form or, you know, just for Robert or you and or Jonathan more generally? What I, what I would say uh, is if anyone after this um, thinks or oh, there was a question I wanted to ask or um, in the future thinks I, I'd, I'd like to know a bit more about um, healthcare science in the faculty uh, from, from my perspective at least. Um, Joe, is it OK if people contact you and you put them through? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, Very happy to pick those up. I've, put, uh, I've just put the FCI email in the chat, so please do, um, do get in touch and uh, yeah, I can get back to you or, or pass them on. Um, definitely. Um, and again, this this has been recorded, so um, we'll, we'll put this out uh, on on the website and our YouTube channel, and would encourage you to yeah share with anyone that's interested. And, and echo that from an HP perspective as well. Yeah, you know, uh, if you've got any queries, just get in touch. We'd rather have the conversation and then you know receive your application once you, you know it's right for you um, then, then, then sit on it and worry if it's going to be right yeah okay brilliant um anyone else have any last burning questions otherwise i think um yeah, I think we can. I think we can call it there. Um, just to emphasise, oh, we've got one here from Rayad. Yeah, uh, Rayad. Yeah, really interesting question about bioinformatics and clinical informatics. I'm, I'm not going to draw any hard lines at the moment. Uh, roughly speaking, if you look at any biomedical technology, it has an informatics component. No one's doing anything that doesn't. Um, we've got some uh, some s serious contacts in the genetics world and in the bioinformatics world, and we can join people up in doing that. But it's all within within the big tent of clinical informatics. For anybody else? Uh, Kristen's just joined us. If you do have any questions, Kristen, switch them over to email and, and we'll follow them up after the meeting, please. Yeah. OK. Um, you and Robert or Jonathan, do you have any final comments? Or um, should we cover everything? Just really pleased everyone's taken the trouble to, to join in and I wish you all the best with your applications. Yep, get the forms filled in. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. The fact that you're here suggests that you're probably that you are already interested. So make the most of that interest and just go for it. Um, if there's any application, the worst they can say is no. Um, so so don't be uh, don't be put off by it. Um, continue your interest in informatics and 
you know, that this will be part of your journey. So yeah, go. I would say go for it. You you won't look back. Brilliant. Thanks, everybody. Thanks everybody for joining, and yeah, many thanks to you and Robert and Jonathan. No problem. Have a good weekend when it comes, everyone. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thanks everybody.